boy, your days are the bottom to us. I used to be an adventurer like you. What the fuck? Mother of God. Hey guys, King of Persia back. I'm sorry for uploading kind of late. I was really procrastinating this video. I don't know why. Anyway, let's get started. So this is my video on uh, what is an MMORPG series of questing. So questing is one of the main things you're going to be doing in an MMORPG. It is the one of the cornerstones, one of the uh, pillars, as they like to say, of MMORPGs. Now with MMORPGs, there's pillars. There's like three or four pillars. There's one that's questing, which is what I'm talking about today. There's exploration, socializing, and something else. And so questing is one of the big things about MMORPGs. You're going to be doing a lot of it. Uh, you do it to gain experience, to level up, so you can get to stronger areas, take on tougher tougher enemies, tougher bosses, and you get rewards as well. You get currency usually, and you also get items. And those items can be different depending upon the game that you're playing. So usually it's gear, like your weapon or your armor, like a headpiece or chest piece or shoulder pads or whatever. You get items, and there are also um, um, quest items that you can that, that you use to complete the quest. And those are, uh, you can't get, you usually can't get rid of those or else you'd have to restart the quest over again. And they don't want you doing that, so you usually can't get rid of those. So there's, there's regular quests and there's also heroic quests. Heroic quests are ones that require more than one person to do. And so because you're taking on tougher enemies and you need more people to do it. They're just tougher, so you need more people. Uh, you can share quests with people that are in your group in case they don't have it. Although if there are, if there are certain, um, certain parts to a quest like, uh, like you do one, you do one quest, you turn it in, and then you uh, you do another part of that same quest that leads you to another quest. You can't share that second part of the quest if the first person, if the other person has not done the first part of the quest. So it's like a chain. Um, a quest chain is a, a group of quests that lead to each other. So you do one quest, you complete it, and then the person that gave you the quest leads you to another quest. That's a quest chain. Uh, you get quests from quest givers. I'm saying quest a lot, aren't I? You get quests from quest givers, and uh, you talk to them. They usually tell you the backstory behind the quest, like uh, you know, I, I need, uh, I got a bunch of guys raided my farm. Can you go kill them for me? Something like that. And while on that note, there is a type of quest that's very common. It's called the fetch quest, and it's basically you, you just go talk to a quest giver. They ask you to go get something. You bring them back. You complete the quest. That's it. What else? Uh, there, if, if there are flashpoints or instances, uh, grouped areas, like instances or uh, phases in an MMORPG, there usually be several several quests, also known as missions, as I, I used to call them. Several quests that pertain to that area, so you get all of them, you go in, do them all, and you get lots of XP because you're training in a lot of, a lot of um, heroic quests that cost usually more, or that reward usually more than regular quests. They usually reward more XP and more gear better gear because you did it with more people. In Star Wars The Old Republic, quests have stories to them, uh, actual cinematics like all quests do in Star Wars, most of them anyway. And then there's also uh, World of Warcraft, which is where you just right click on an NPC, a non-player character or a quest giver, and uh, the, uh, the text shows up on the screen, you click accept, and it'll even show you the rewards you get for accepting the quest, and you do it. Um, when you're doing a quest, when you're doing if you have to collect a certain amount of items, there's usually your quest tracker, which will tell you how many of that item you have out of how many you need. So 16 out of 25, something like that. Um, quests have, um, with with how, I guess, easy or more casual MMOs have become today, quests usually didn't always tell you exactly where to go to do the quest, but now they do. Usually on maps, in Star Wars Old Republic on maps, there are these little icons that show up on the map that tell you where to go. And uh, World of Warcraft used to have an arrow that went above your head on the screen that tells you where to go, and now they just highlight the map. Um, but in vanilla World of Warcraft, which is before the expansion pack Burning Crusade, um, they would say, you know, they're they're a little more they're they're kind of the southwest from here. They're a little toward the south. They would just tell you that they tell you like what direction or what they're near. They wouldn't tell you exactly where to go. And I thought that was really cool because it was really challenging. But unfortunately, World of Warcraft has changed. There are also daily quests or weekly quests. Daily quests are quests that you can do once a day, so they're repeatable daily. And they usually give you um, well, lots of different things. Mostly, uh, it's, it's usually for reputation because you can do them over and over again so you can keep getting reputation until that's maxed. 
um, and then also money as well and experience if you if you do so need it. And they're a great way, in my opinion, for money because you can keep doing them if there's no end to them. You just keep doing them and doing them and doing them. And they usually pertain to, once again, a, a, a faction that you can get reputation with, so that's one of the big things for daily quests. First daily quest I saw was in Burning Crusade of World of Warcraft. And the, uh, this guy's next to Shadrath City that gave you those flying mounts, those little squid looking things, or x-ray things, or whatever, I don't know. Those things, I don't know, those mounts. One of the things that a lot of people like about World of Warcraft is that it's very open and um, not very restrictive because when you start your journey as a character in the game, when you start a character, you don't have any quests with you. You can just walk around and do whatever you want, but you pretty much have to do quests to level up. Um, so you do them, but you're not restricted to any quest. You can do whatever quest you want as long as you're leveled enough for it, as long as you're strong enough to do it, you can do it. There's no, there's really no direction in World of Warcraft. It's just get to the last level, get to the max level, and do whatever you want. PvP, PvE, any of that stuff, or achievements, whatever, is, whatever content there is. Star Wars is different. Star Wars is the Republic. Uh, once again, the main reason I'm mentioning only World of Warcraft and Star Wars are because those are the only two MMO RPGs I've really seriously put time into playing. I've played Lord of the Rings Online a while ago. Um, that was fun, but I didn't play it for that long. But uh, in Star Wars, uh, they want you to focus on a story. They want you to go through a continuation of a story as you level up. So when you actually start your character, you have a quest to do because you pertain to a story. If you didn't start with the quest, the story quest, it would be possible just to level up without that story quest, and they don't want you to do that. So when you start your character, there's actually a cinematic that starts it it starts the quest for it. You don't just start in a random area, you don't just spawn there and then talk to a quest giver. No, you, they start you off with it. And that being said, you can't abandon it. You can't get rid of the quest. You can't take it out of your log so you don't have to do it anymore. You can't take it out. You have to do that. Uh, there are, uh, I guess it's possible to not do it because you can still go to the planets and do quests and stuff, like side quests, which are the quests that aren't the main quest. But I've never done that. There's really no point to that, so, yeah. Also, for quests that are not in MMORPGs, particularly the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. There is a main quest, but there is a plethora of side quests. Once again, this is not an MMORPG. They are making Elder Scrolls online, but I'm talking about Skyrim in particular. Um, there's a crap load, of, crap load of side quests that you can do, and they're very pretty. They're pretty cool. I like them a lot. And that's, you can, uh, one of the cool things that they do in Skyrim is that, or the Elder Scrolls in general, is that you can go, you can uh, stray from the main quest, the main story of the game, as much as you want. You don't have to do it at all. Um, technically, I mean, it's, it's a little, it's a little ambiguous when you put the word beat and Skyrim in the same sentence because like it, there's a there's so much to do it's kind of hard to dictate what it's kind of hard to tell what dictates you as beating the game I guess in my opinion you beat the game if you do the main quest unfortunately I got glitched out of it so I can't do it my point is that quests are really evolving in the sense that uh, they're, they're very dynamic like you, you can do them you don't have to do them they've got a lot of different content they're coming out with different quests not only fetch quests and kill quests and all that stuff but lots of different quests you can do where you can just talk to somebody and get a quest and yeah. So, thank you for watching. If you want to be friends with me on Steam, my Steam name is the same as my YouTube name. Don't forget to like this video and my Facebook, and also subscribe. Thank you for watching.